This is my friend Tim. He's been flipping video games at flea markets for the last four years, but recently it's been a struggle. On top of finding fewer games at thrift stores and pawn shops, foot traffic has slowed at the flea markets he sells in, and he's had to close some of his locations. He's agreed to take me through a day in the life of a flea market flipper, and my goal is to learn what this business is really like and what his plans are to pivot and grow in the future. Tim, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? Great, Good thank you, you for having us of out. Of course, absolutely. What, uh, what are you up to here? I'm here restocking some games in my my, uh, my booth, or showcase, okay. actually. But these are only like a part of your broader flea market Correct. empire, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, this is just one location out of six that I have set up. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So are you willing to say, I mean, we always talk about we're money positive sure. on this channel. What are you willing to say about the kind of numbers that a location like this does? Sure, in this economy, honestly, these two showcases produce maybe about a thousand dollars in sales. Oh wow, And so after, every month? Correct, okay. so on average 750 to a thousand, yeah. uh, minus all the fees and the commission and the uh, rent for this as well. Right. So between that multiplied by six, you get a number that's about $3,000 a month in sales. Dang, and are you willing to say like what rent is at a place like yeah, this? Rent Does it go buy showcase? Yeah, this buy showcase is about $65 and 8% commission. Dang. So if that multiplies, you know, between multiple showcases. I honestly would have thought it'd be more. I mean, it, relative to the sales that you're getting, it mm -hmm. seems pretty reasonable. But that's just for me. So compared to other people, right, they might not be able to make that $65 in rent, depending on what they sell, because of how slow sales may be. Do you think there are a lot of people in like this, facility that might not be making their rent? I try not to judge people, but if I look at your showcase and it's like maybe three-fourths full or like, right. you know, pretty empty sh shelves, uh -huh. I don't have high hopes for them. It's right over here. So this is a competitor's booth over here, also video game inventory. By the way, folks, Tim has graciously agreed to take us a little bit later to a couple of his regular sourcing locations, maybe like a pawn shop and a sure. thrift store, yeah. so that we get a first-hand glance at what it looks like to actually try to find this kind of inventory, which is super exciting. But yeah, this this is what this is what we were looking at and again you know respect to all business models it's hard with this kind of inventory to stay in stock but like this game right down here is normally like an eight to ten dollar game and it's priced at 25 with competition like this i can see why your sales are so good because your prices are very competitive do you normally try to go like right at market value or a little bit below so i price it right at market value and then i lower the prices every month so if you see those oh. green stickers those are clearance prices at two or three dollars a piece for stuff like Xbox 360 or PS3 stuff, I try to liquidate them. I don't want to keep them on hand. I like to keep my shelves full, but I also like to sell things, so. Wow, yeah, one motto that we have on the channel is buy low, sell fast. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you found a way to do that even with your flea market model. Is that Does that take yeah. a lot of extra work? Do you think most of these people in here are repricing that frequently? They're not. So what I do is I would take out a chunk or a shelf full of games and put in a new shelf of games, but take the old ones out to reprice at home. Wow. So it's never empty. So you're definitely putting in that extra bit of effort that your competition may or may not really be willing to do. Yeah, because I don't think they're able to find the amount of quantity as I do. Mm. So I have extra bins of games at home just sitting, uh, which is bad, right? But it helps me to re replenish what's owed here. Interesting. And then, do you think that has to do with the fact that, because in my experience, oftentimes the people who keep their prices the highest and who are afraid to really mm. get that sales flow going is because they're not honestly the best at sourcing. Mm -hmm. Like they're scared, okay, if I price this yeah. Sega GT02 mm -hmm. down to 10 bucks, yeah. I don't know when I'm gonna get another one. Yeah. Whereas guys like you and me might mm -hmm. not be as concerned about that because you probably find that game every other month. Yeah, I try to source as much as I can and I diversify, not just video games, which is getting harder to find. Right. I do toys and bicycles, this is stuff where I could flip for a profit. And that's just uh -huh. my Is that principle. partly because games have started to get harder to find? They're really hard to find. So yeah. the best way is just to buy collections now. Mm -hmm. But that takes a lot of, as you know, a lot of money put down at once. Totally, And we man. talked about the risk of it, about that as well. I'm with you, yeah. yeah. Okay, so folks, this is another booth that we just found that has video games for reference before we head to these uh, pawn and thrift stores. But like, look at look at this. There's no prices on any of the spines and these are all, like, I don't think I see a game up here that is more than like five bucks. Not I mean, this related. is, yeah, almost all sports related. You've got like Just Dance and Skylanders. And then look at this, like this is Tim's competition. It's easy to see why you're doing so well in sales. I mean, this honestly just, it, it hurts your heart to even see because these things are getting destroyed in this. Look at that disc. 
Can you believe that? I mean, there's no way this thing's going to play. And this probably happened since they put this in here. So I definitely am starting to see why you're so successful, but yeah, let's, let's head out of here and see if we can find some more goodies for you. By the way, folks, this is the Hillview Peddlers Mall. If any of you guys want to purchase any of the stuff from Tim that you are seeing in those showcases, Tim, where are we heading next? We're going to head to a Goodwill and a pawn shop. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll cross our fingers, folks. What Tim doesn't know is we actually brought a bin full of games to potentially do a bulk deal with him on later today. So you mentioned earlier how you've had to diversify your sourcing from just video games because it's gotten overall harder to find stuff. So what kinds of stuff do you look for outside of just video games when you go to a Goodwill like this? Quick furniture flips, small toys. Furniture, huh? Yeah. I don't know if I've ever met a furniture flipper. One time I found a really cool chair for $10 and uh -huh. it sold immediately within like six hours for $350. Oh my gosh, that, I need to start looking for furniture. So where are we heading first? We're gonna head back to the toys on the top and then the media in the back. Okay, got that classic used clothing smell up in here. I love it. You ever mess with plush? I do, like this. This is pretty cool. That actually is. That looks like, I mean, anime related stuff. Yeah, it's got I a imagine. Sega sticker. A Sega. Well, it's $10. But 10 is just, it's not in the right range. I'm going to have to Google image it and see what it actually retails for and what it okay, sells Okay, could you show me that process? Sure. That'd be interesting. Absolutely. I so just, this is a great tip for you guys who are sourcing. If you find stuff that you might be able to look up via Google image search, right? You don't necessarily know what it's called. Like, what would you even Google for this? Like, video I game know girl the, plush? Yeah, I don't know the anime character, so this right. really helps me with that. I open up Google. Google app, Lens. Google Lens. I take the picture of it like this. And it should show me. It is from Demon Anime. Slayer. Okay, Demon Slayer. Okay. This looks like this one sold for a best offer of 20. And that's the pink eyes as well. Correct. That's the same character right there. So under 20 bucks, most likely. Yeah. So brand new, about 40, but it's a hit or miss. But with the convention coming up, I might just buy it and see how it Interesting. does. Interesting. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Well, I guess we got our first pickup, folks. Let's yeah. go. I really like plushes because it's so easy to ship. You just put them in a little uh -huh. poly mailer. Impossible to break in yeah. shipping. Holy cow, we're in plush heaven. I know, right? Oh, look, another one. Oh, and you already know, is that thing it's, priced at 10 as well? Um, It is. I mean, there's a lot of Squishmallows. Ooh, what about a T-Bone here? That is pretty cool. I have sold some, but I don't like paying more than 50 cents, 25 cents for it. So what percentage of your sales would you say that plushes constitute? A pretty small percentage, maybe like 10%. What about like Squish, is this a Squishmallow? It is a Squishmallow. Do these do well? Uh, they are good attention grabbers for your okay. showcases. So if people see that, um, I think they'll be drawn towards your showcase. Uh, but then you have to really price it competitively. Stores like Kroger sells it for like $10. Oh, wow. And so for you, if you buy it for a dollar, you probably won't get $4 for it. Right. That's pretty cool though. I really find anime stuff here. Ooh. Oh, oh, we got some brand new fuzzy dice. Typically, they don't keep games over here anymore. I might just see one, but it's priced at $5. Five bucks for Disneyland Adventures. This is probably honestly a $5 game. Yeah. So where would you, like, do they keep them in the glass case? Sometimes they do on the front. Okay. But do you do any other media? I sometimes look at Bibles mm -hmm. or like uh, commentaries. Those sell pretty well, but I hardly find those. Commentaries, seminary guy right yeah. here, you can tell. <laughs> he knows how expensive those things are. Those things are expensive. Sometimes I'll look for shirts if I have the time, but usually I'm in and out in five minutes. <laughs> Spanky, I dare you to wear this in our next stop. <laughs> oh yeah, he can pull it off. You gotta put your behind in your pants. <laughs> okay. Folks, I got distracted with the shirt, and in the meantime, Tim's already. Oh, jeez! Look at this. It's an actual. It's an actual Jurassic Park brand, based off this logo. That is like the king of. Like, do you ever find plushes this big? That's not a plush. It's a ride-on toy. <laughs> I guess have you seen them all? <laughs> my not a plush guy. My son will love it. My wife will hate it. <laughs> wow. So you, this is just picking up for personal. You think? Um, for Risa, I want to see how much it retails. But kind of going back to that story of, you know, something that, a oh, bad purchase. I bought this huge ride-on pony uh -huh. and it sat for eight months in my garage. And my wife was like, don't ever have a pony story again. So this <laughs> could be a pony story or it could sell fast. I don't but know you're yet. tempted. So I'm going to look up Jurassic Park ride-on. 425. I'm not sure that's a, a sold listing, but that's a current. Was that maybe like original retail or? Oh, here. eBay says 200. But I feel like a local sale on Marketplace. I could probably get 100. Would your wife agree? Biggest question is storage, right? How long would it store it for? Yeah. It's big and bulky. But in the meantime, my toddler can play with it. <laughs> so it's like weighing the pros and cons all the time. The other question is I mean, is what's like, the weight limit? Welcome to Jurassic Park. No. About to find out. <laughs> 
Spanky actually rides to work on one of these things. I don't think I want to fork over $50 for that right now, but somebody's going to buy that and be really happy about I it. I think that's probably the right move. Yeah. So there's that little Xbox game bundle there. Does that interest you at all? Looks like $20. Yeah, Maybe it depends on the, the titles. titles. Okay. I can't. But with what's on top, yeah. it's not encouraging. Disney Infinity on top, so that's you know like a $1 game on a good day. But the bag of Legos, that's a cool story here though. I once found a box of Legos for $35 here. Uh -huh. And on top was some Star Wars figures and like a Star Wars ship. Oh, like and the minifigs. Yeah, so I didn't know much about those Lego Star Wars, but uh -huh. when I Google imaged it, it was $299 used on eBay. For the minifig? No, for the spaceship with the minifigs. So I was oh. like, I gotta get this. I go home post and immediately it sells. For how much? For 300. Money! Okay, so we just found a couple Lego sets up here, it looks like. Are these brand new? They are. Yeah, not retaped. Like, this thing isn't broken. Yeah. Um, but it seems like, yeah, it seems legit to me. So what do you look for on these? I scan them on eBay and see what they actually sold for. At a price tag of $10, though, it's going to be a gonna be a stretch. We'll see. This is one thing that I also would pick up, like, as an Amazon seller, because brand new Lego sets can do well on there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you will be gated in them. So I'm curious if there's a difference. What are you seeing on that? 12 bucks. Yeah, this one is looking 15 brand new condition on Amazon. Yeah. So unfortunately, seven after fees on that, that one would probably be even less. Yeah. Well, it's cool for the people who want to buy it for the kids. I don't think you would look good in those. So folks ended up coming out with just a couple plushes from Goodwill. We're actually here at a pawn shop that Tim's never been to before because yeah. I've made tons of pawn routes in this area in my day. Um, they should have a decent video game selection, Sweet. so hopefully we can score in there. We're gonna have to go a little bit incognito with the camera, but I'm hoping that we can get a little bit of a sweet deal. I've, I've done some good bulk deals on games in the past here. Hey, it's my dog. Hey dog, how's it going? Hey, how are you all? Good. good. On the hunt for video games today. Looking for video games? Yeah. Well, uh, we got Newer gen in here, what little we have. Okay. And then some older stuff is all on that bookshelf there. Gotcha. Uh, Seeing anything interesting? It's surprising they have some retro games, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you don't normally see video game sections this big <laughs> at a pawn shop. I mean, honestly, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking uh -huh. about your 1UP app. Yeah. Like, uh, what appreciate games, the shout out, man. Like, what kind of games are for Wii that I can't really sell as quickly, but uh -huh. I can put onto your app and sell it to you? Yeah, I'm I'm looking for that as well. You just sent us your first big batch mm -hmm. last week, which I'll have to ask you about, but I'm not seeing anything here off first glance that is on the list, no. But I'm gonna see how much they actually want for these older Wii games. If it's a dollar or two, I can still buy some uh, shelf fillers. Okay, yeah, for sure. Like Hulk, Batman seems pretty good. Oh, and like Toy Story is a pretty popular one. Here's Vice Cities, but it's loose disc and scratch. Okay. And Final Fantasy titles. So when you say shelf filler, like approximately what dollar amount would you be looking for to like price them at? Like four or five dollars. Okay. And I know they'll sit for a little bit, but it still attracts more people and it gives me more stock mm -hmm. when I know, you know, sourcing is slim. So what kind of titles did you pick out there? Interesting. And what and what would you want to be paying for that? I want to be paying like a dollar or two dollars at most for these. Gotcha. Um, depends on the condition as well. Okay. I mean, yeah, know your sports titles like NCAA football. If you go 12 or newer, it's on your one-up app mm -hmm. like this. If this was any cheaper, like seven bucks, I'd buy it right here, that uh, Motion mm -hmm. Plus. Yeah, because we pay 12 on those. Mm -hmm. Good thought, though. I like how you're thinking, man. So I guess all that's left is to just see what they're looking for on those, huh? Yeah. I mean, if it's $5, I'm just going to put them back. But... Okay, yeah. That's some pretty cool games in here, too. Yeah, not, not bad deals on those Switch games. So I'm looking for any cracks on the discs mm -hmm. or any, like, major scratches Yeah. that I... You may not want to take the time to rebuff. Right, makes sense. Dang, spanky, nice eye. Spotted those little gems we may have to ask about. We'll see. Definitely the kind of titles we like. Hi, excuse me, sir. How much are your games? Uh, stuff on that shelf is five a piece. Some buy piece? three, get one free. So it'll be 50. Okay, buy three, get one free? Yep. Okay, and are those games for sale? Some of them are just cases, I think. Okay. I'll be interested in empty cases as well. That's Mario Sunshine, but inside yeah. is Melee. What would you be asking for the GameCube stuff? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look it up, okay. honestly. 
Would you be in, interested in that case or both or? Yeah, it depends on the, yeah. on the offer. Okay, let me look up sure. this stuff real quick. Appreciate it. So folks, those are definitely words that you don't normally want to hear when you're trying to negotiate at a pawn shop. Let me go look it up, uh, cause normally that means they'll be somewhat close to uh, market value. Spanky just found my favorite movie over there. Appreciate you looking out, bro. So the Pac-Man World game, I just do like seven bars on that. Okay. Um, Star Fox. 20. This empty case with the manual just five bucks. Okay. Um, on that, I mean, it's pretty scratched. Oh yeah. Would you uh, still want it? Depends on the price. What are you thinking? I don't know. As this condition, like five or ten dollars. Because uh, I could try to rebuff it, but usually GameCube games, if you rebuff it, it's a hit or miss. That's like a 50 50 percent chance of it working again. I do like 20 bucks. It's too high of a risk because it sells, you know, used for 40. Right. I think I'll hold on to it for sure. now. Yeah. Would you do even 20 for it all? For these right here? You said five dollars for this. Do you have any prices on the empty cases? I just do a dollar a piece if you want those. Sure, I'll take I'll take these three. Well, I just do 28 and cover the tax. 28 and cover the tax. Yeah, it's a dollar difference. I'll be fine. Okay. Wow, Tim, I have to admit, I didn't, I was not confident you were gonna come out with a deal there. Me but either. you somehow managed to secure it. I was surprised as well too. Are you, like, how do you feel about it? I feel all right. The margin's a little bit smaller than I wanted them to be. Uh -huh. But I feel like my best thing was the uh, Super Mario Sunshine case. Uh -huh. I think I find loose this all the time. If not, this case itself sells for 15, which makes up for a half And you buy. paid, what, five? Yeah. I think a big takeaway for people from there is like a lot of people would have heard those prices initially and been like, I'm out. Honestly, mm -hmm. I might have done that. Yeah. But you persisted and you were like, kept throwing offers and like, okay, if I bundled this stuff, mm -hmm. right, would you come down a little bit? Can you work with me at all? Like, what if we threw this in? What's your price on that? And you basically got a bundle of the stuff that you were closest on, mm -hmm. got them down a little bit. Yep. And ended up coming to a deal. Correct. Where a lot of people would have walked away. What do you think? Because you paid 20 something. I what do you think? I paid $28 on this. I think I might make like 20 bucks. Okay. But it's a small margin, but I think it's good for me to fill my showcases with stuff like this. Totally. Um, it's not for eBay resellers, because after fees, you would not make anything. But for vendors at showcases, like what I do, this game, I might throw on eBay to break even. Yeah. Or, or at least get some of my money back, and the rest I'll just let it sit. Well, and what an important lesson. Like, this is why I'm always saying, like, collaborate, don't compete. There's so much opportunity for cooperation between guys like you and guys like me, even though we both sell video games. Mm -hmm. Like, what sells great for me might not sell great for you and vice versa, right? Okay. All that stuff doesn't work for my model, but you walked in there with nothing and came out with a $20 profit. So yeah. there's just so much that we have to learn from each other and so mm -hmm. much, which I'm hoping we can do a little bit later. Don't, don't spoil the secret, guys. There, there, may be, there may be a little potential later that you and I can collaborate on something, but we won't spoil that yet. Would it be $25? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to flip that to me right now, you sly dog. All right, so we're on our way to another flea market, both to check out one of Tim's locations and also to do a little bit more buying, hopefully. But Tim, what did you just tell me you're doing back there in the backseat? Shopping on Facebook Marketplace for deals. This man is a hustler. He's got Facebook Marketplace pulled up in the five minutes we have between locations. Folks, this is what it takes. Like, if you wanna if you wanna make it in this video game business, like, you gotta learn from Tim here. We've got a fountain of knowledge in the back here. What you just if you're have to... driving? Not yet, not when you're driving. <laughs> huh? Maybe. That's a joke, boy! What, so, when you're looking on Facebook Marketplace, like, what specifically are you looking for? Honestly, video game bundles uh -huh. that people are trying to get rid of are new listings that people haven't seen yet. Uh-huh. And I just try to keep refreshing, and I try to type in keywords quickly um, to see what new things pop up. And that's why you have to be on it so often. Correct. Because you're not the first one there. They go like that. Correct. How often are you doing deals with other resellers? Is that common for you? That is pretty common um, for me to sell to them to get a cash flow. Yeah. Um, but most resellers aren't as generous with their deals. Their margins are pretty small. So for me, buying from them is sometimes uh, less frequent. Except for Phoenix Resale, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> honest opinion though, brutally honest opinion. Because we've done, I've sold you bulk deals in the past. Correct. Like, do you think the deals are decent? Or I have... do, because I calculate, you know, what things can sell the quickest, uh -huh. sell those out first, right. and get at least a sum back. So it's all about cash flow issue when you're a full-time reseller. Right. Right. I need the cash on hand to buy more stuff. 
But if I just bought a big collection, I need to get rid of what I can quickly mm -hmm. to get some cash back. He's giving you a resale degree here, folks, from the backseat of the Prius. <laughs> get your notepads out and listen up. And speaking of, we're here at the South Louisville Antique and Toy Mall, about to go check out yet another one of Tim's locations and maybe even, maybe even snipe some stuff from his fellow vendors. We'll see. Dude, this place is incredible. This is like a toy lover's haven. Yeah. What, I mean, direct us. Where do we start? Where's so, your place? My place is right here. Okay. So we got more very similar showcases to the last place. Is the rent here similar? Yeah. Okay. Like 65, 70 is about average. For a showcase. Correct. And you've got this one packed out as well. Look at this. I mean, you've got Super Paper Mario, Donkey Kong Country. We've got a few games here that we actually could theoretically buy from you that we buy through Quick Flips. But yeah, we've got like GameCube, Genesis, some consoles. I mean, you've got a really solid selection here, man. Thank you. So a concern that you were telling me about earlier for the future of your business is that recently you've had to consolidate some of your locations. You were at like seven or eight, right? Correct. And now you're down to six. What was the reasoning for that as we explore some of these, some more of these cases here? Sure, the rent going up while the sales are going down. Okay. So that's business so rent 101. used to be less than 65? Correct. Sometimes it goes up five or $10. Okay. Uh, you know, semi-annually. So I used to have five showcases here mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't making sales enough for me to be profitable. So one or two months I actually owed money because of how low the sales dropped. Wow. So that's a good way to know, hey, I got to close some stuff out. So right. between five, that was $300 in rent and I was making maybe $600 in sales. So Dang. after take home pay and what I put into the cost of it, I'm making right. $100 or, or maybe $200 at most. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason for me to just do one and for, it's easier for me to manage the stock with this one as well. How did you decide which location to close down and to distribute to the other ones? Was it just a matter of like sales to cost ratio? Correct. Okay. So are you concerned for the future of the business as well that you'll have to consolidate more locations or has it leveled out? It's leveled out enough after I consolidated. Okay. So I've took a month or two just to consolidate all my locations mm -hmm. to make sure they're primed with good stuff that actually sells. Yeah, I definitely, I want to hear more from you about like your plans to continue to adapt in the future. You already mm -hmm. talked about buying more kinds of inventory. Yeah. You've talked about consolidating. Mm -hmm. I know you've dabbled in online as well. Yep. Um, but right now, what are some of the other booths that you like to go to to see if there's stuff that you can buy to sure. stock your own booth with? First, I look to, to see if there's any clearance signs. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of zooms me in on. Okay, 10% off. 50% off bottom two shelves yep. could be a good one. Um, there's a couple of video game locations in this store uh -huh. that I'm trying to see. Wow. So this is really cool. They run these trains every Sunday afternoon. No way. Yeah. And this is just like a local attraction for Correct. like railroad enthusiasts. Correct. All aboard the profit train, folks. Choo choo. Choo choo. Anything catching your eye there? I just appreciate when people actually have retro stuff in stock. Yeah. Means, hey, they're sourcing some good stuff. So this showcase uh, about a year and a half back had some Atari games and mm. with some good deals that I profited off of. So you just never know when something might pop up in a random booth. Correct. Just never know what you'll find in places like this. Right. Okay, so there's one last case that Tim wanted to show us in this flea market that has a bunch of box stuff. Yeah. Dang. So this shelf Woo! used to be completely full of box stuff. So it looks like he's in pretty well. There he is. The man himself. Is that an actual vintage one too? That's super cool. But give me an idea, Tim, of like numbers, like actual like profit and stuff or sales of this location before and now. Sure. Before I had five showcases, I was making about $2,000 in sales mm -hmm. and it started to plummet. I think mostly main reason is the economy, but also I wasn't stocking good stuff to attract people to actually buy it. Yeah. But now since I'm down one showcase, um, I have to be really careful. I'm only making about seven to eight hundred dollars in sales a month here okay but since your costs are low mm -hmm. 65 dollars and your buy costs are normally low it's still worth the effort correct i want to keep a foot in the door and at each location in mm -hmm. case it picks up again i could expand quickly i want to ask you a little bit more about sort of your contingency plan because i know you're also selling at conventions you've mm -hmm. done some online yeah. i want to get a better idea of that but first i think we should try to work out a deal all right all right, so Tim, I do have Ooh, here for you awesome. a solid bin full of stuff that I'm hoping to do a bulk deal on. Looks like okay. you also have a good amount of product in that cart that you brought to restock at the Vendors Village here, right? Correct. So we're here in Clarksville, Louisville. If you guys are in the area, definitely stop by. Clarksville, Indiana. 
Oh, we crossed the bridge. Folks, we're here in Clarksville, Indiana. So if you guys are in the neighborhood, definitely stop by. It's a little bit windy out here, so we're gonna go do this deal inside and check out his third booth. I think I may have found our next box cutter. Uh -huh. I used to be the only vendor that sells video games here for and about so two years. So other ones, you think they saw like your success and they hopped in? Yeah, I think so. Kind of, I started the client base, people attracting people here. I used to have 12 showcases, uh -huh. now I'm down to four or five. Do you think that other people selling video games here ultimately helps you or hurts you? I think it helps me. Okay. Because it brings in the same clientele. Yeah. So in terms of, we'll see if we can get you sure. stuck with a little bit more stuff here. If you want to start taking a look at yeah. condition, we've got everything from like a ton of um, NES games, which we can't sell on Amazon, but okay. we also have some like pretty high-end handhelds. We've got like, you know, a, a Berry Game Boy Color. This one, like the screen is just too scratched for us to sell on Amazon. Everyone will always say like, dude, just repair it. But uh -huh. a big reason that we're able to do so much volume is we don't do repairs. So we'll just clear it out to a handsome gent like you. All right. And uh, we also have this, like a, a yeah. new 3DS but it's got like a little uh, bit of chewing okay. there on the stick. Not the kind of thing that would necessarily deter someone if you do like a 10 or 20% discount, right? Like this mm -hmm. thing will sell pretty quick. I actually already put it in a lot here for a little shameless plug on one up. <laughs> this is one of the features that I'm most excited about. So if I bring up this little Tim deal lot here, we already have the like total value of everything that's here. So we really just need to agree on a percentage because we can okay. see based on price charting values yeah. what this entire bin is worth. Mm -hmm. And the best part is I can just go here to share a lot and I'm just gonna send you the link to this so that you can see it on your device as well. It's cool. so like some stuff like this, mm -hmm. Kirby, you can see it's got, got a little bit of water damage, stuff like that. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, like this is something that we can't sell on oh, Amazon. Okay. It's got a couple scratches on it, but that'll still probably sell really fast in person. I wanted to get your honest thoughts because you sent us your first ever quick flips batch last week. Yeah. What what was the best and worst part about that system? Because you sent us like over a thousand bucks worth of stuff. I did, yeah. Like wholesale. We may end up doing a little bit of trade value for this sure. stuff, but give me the brutally honest feedback. I think the app was actually really easy to navigate through. Okay. I'm usually pretty skeptical about new apps, like mm -hmm. I have to learn a whole new system. But within like two or three minutes, I was able to upload whatever I wanted to, mm -hmm. and it was able to see and track really easily what offers you can make for me. And I think what really helped was also your guideline feature. Like, hey, these are the conditions we're looking for, not yeah. this, but this. That was really helpful. And then the difference between complete or missing manual, I thought that was really helpful too. It was a small difference, but it straight up really ad read right here. I'm gonna have to give you a good deal on this <laughs> stuff, man. You're helping me out, I appreciate it. I really it. thought it was a quick process. Well, yeah, so, I mean, looking at the condition of this, what kind sure. of percentage would you, like, want to be at? I know we've done in the neighborhood of, like, 50, mm -hmm. 55%, sometimes 45% in the past, sure, depending. Sure. What do you think? I think the NES stuff, I mean, I'm willing to pay a decent amount for. Okay. Uh, I know they're cheaper titles. Fast. These are what I call, like, attractive features. Like, yeah. when people see retro games, they kind of zoom in on that. These are a bit slower sellers for me, but they're That's fast. Fascinating. They're fast sellers online, right? But slow. For we local. sell like these. Yeah. If if it just didn't have this, where it would be same day sale probably. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Okay, so I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag for you for your sure. model. What kind of percentage would you be comfortable with? I always I always ask what you would be. He's comfortable a smart with. negotiator. <laughs> he never likes to give the first number. I'll tell you what. Normally, I'd try to be at like fifty percent, but you've been so kind to us today. How, what would you say to forty-five? 45% off or 45% 45 of, of market value. Wow, that would be super generous. All right, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for showing us around. Wow. And I have a few more questions for you sure. now that we're here with all the stuff to restock. Let's do it. So Tim, you also brought a whole bunch of stuff to restock your case with, which is a big part of your process. Yep. How did you get into flea market selling specifically as a business model and why do you like it better than other models like ours selling online or like open up a physical video game store? Yeah, it was a few years back when I first moved to this area mm -hmm. and I was doing eBay for the longest time. Okay. But once I discovered this, I wanted to give it a go and see how it would turn out. And the first month with this one showcase, I did 1600 in sale. So $1,600 in sale with this one showcase. So Holy I thought, hey, cow. that's a really encouraging start. Uh huh. And so a few months later, they had more showcases available for rent. And I would just continue getting more and more showcases. 
you gobble them up. I gobble them up for years on years. And for the first two years, I was growing a showcase a month, basically. Holy cow. Yeah. And this was back in 2018? Yes. And since then, one thing that you said that was super interesting, a lot of people assume that like our model or like an eBay seller's model is the most flexible that you can possibly be as a video game seller. But yeah. you would say that it's actually number two. It is for me because of family life. And this is almost like a vending machine setup. Yeah. Because these are behind locked showcases and you can't really steal it. I just have to just manage it once a month. That's crazy because the biggest difference between this and like a setup like ours or selling on eBay is yeah. like- You're constantly when you, working it. Exactly. When you make a sale, if you have a bunch of stuff listed on eBay, you're obligated to ship that out within a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. But when you make a sale here, someone else just takes care of it for you. It's kind of like fulfillment by Amazon in that way that like Correct. when we sell something on Amazon, Amazon fulfills it and we don't have to be on hand. So like you could restock these showcases once a week, once a month, however often you really want to and you don't have to be here. When other people ask you like, should I get into the flea market selling model. What do you tell them? Like, what are the biggest pitfalls to look out for? The season of the economy. I had my friend start doing this at one point too. Uh -huh. It was a peak and then a drop. And so he kind of dropped out of doing this as well too. And I recommend doing that because I was slowly closing cases at the same time. Okay, so it's largely susceptible to economic downturns is, is the scary thing. Correct, and how well you can manage it. Like when you look around at your competition, what are some of like practices that you try to avoid that they do that you think sets you apart? Not stocking it well enough. Like I overstock, like I was saying, while people kind of leave it three, four stocked. Yeah. So I have a lot of chances of paying my rent and profiting higher uh, because of the quantity and quality. Just by keeping it completely full. Correct. And I like making good deals too though. I think that's something that sets me apart. I'm nice right. about deals. <laughs> totally. Do you ever run sales? I do. What kind of sales do you run in a 15 location to like 20 this? 15 to 25% off. So enough to kind of get people excited, but to keep your yeah. margins. But when I'm liquidating, it's like 35, 40% off. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people I think would be scared off by that, but you're not. No. Why not? I need the space back. So if I overstock it and I want the space back, uh -huh. I try to put things on sale. I try to run yard sales or go to conventions to really clear that old stock out uh -huh. so I can bring a new, new stock with a new cash. I know that you're selling at a convention just this weekend kind of as a supplement to Correct. this income. How do you decide what to take? Are you taking everything? I try to take as much as I can. I ran out of moving U-Haul. My neighbors ask, are you guys moving? I'm like, no, I'm just doing an event. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And how much does that cost relative to what you're normally able to make? Uh, it only costs about $400 for the weekend. It depends on the convention or the event. To get a vendor booth? And then plus your, uh, your U-Haul rental, so it's not bad, but the biggest cost is time. Right. I keep going back to. It's an entire weekend. Correct. It's like 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah, the, that, that's a full weekend for sure. Yeah. And a large upfront cost. Correct. So you mentioned since the COVID boom, there's been a significant downturn in sales overall. What were some of the ways that you had to adapt to that? Sure, I used to have 12 showcases here plus five booths. So my rent was close to 2,500, more than my rent for a house or mortgage. Wow. So this is one location, that's how much the rent was. But at that time during the boom, I was making sales between 7,000 upwards of $12,000 each month here, which is amazing. But as that plummeted, which is a really good adjective to describe the sales. It dropped from that down to 4,000, down to 3,000, and sometimes I barely make $1,000 here now. And that's like the economic factors that Correct. are kind of out of your hands that you were talking about. Like you can't control stuff like that. Correct. So you've had to adapt. You shrunk the number of cases that you had, Correct. right? So to lower the rent from that much, I'm only paying maybe $200 in rent right now. Okay, so much more manageable on the rent side. Were there any other like adaptations that you had to make in that season when like prices were going down so much? Yeah, so controlling what I buy and understanding how quickly I can sell those items. But also, I had to find a different part-time job. This was our full-time income mm -hmm. and had to work part-time to really sustain our bills during that time. That's something that a lot of people, I appreciate you talking about that because a lot of people would be like scared to even mention it. It feels like mm -hmm. you haven't made it. Yeah. Right, but the reality is like family comes first. Correct. You know, like as yep. like income earners in the family, like you, you got to do what you have to do. Yeah. So that was the first time my wife saw me working for somebody else in the five years we've been married. Wow. And I was just new. She was like, what are we going to do? And I told her I'll find a different job. What was that like? Was that a tough It was shift? a tough transition because I'll be out of the house six to eight hours a day working for somebody else. Uh, while here, if I just did this full time, it's me just being at home with the kids 
uh, with my wife, helping run the house. Do you still have the part-time job as well? No, I didn't. Uh, so that's the transition I made. I went back to selling online as well. While closing these downs, I reorganized my basement to make it more you know, efficient in that way. And then that's now about 40% of the business and this is 60%. Is eBay? Correct. eBay, Macari, and whatnot. Wow. So running, I guess, three different avenues Correct. of selling games that you get when you're out at the pawn shops and the thrift. And just thinking about keeping those in mind as I'm shopping as well. Like these lower dollar, $10 or less, you're not going to sell on eBay because after fees, you're not making anything. Right. But here, 8% commission, uh, it definitely helps, right? You're not it's losing better than much. the 13 to 15 that you'll pay Correct. on eBay. Correct. That's inspiring, man. I love to hear stories of like just real people who value their yeah. families and are willing to sacrifice. What would you tell people who are looking at this business model, they want to get into it, what are the sacrifices that are required to make the, a line of work like this work? Sure, you have to go out sourcing regularly. Like even I was just sourcing in your car in the back seat on Facebook Marketplace. Exactly. You're trying to find deals, you're trying to, on your time that you're not managing this, you're out sourcing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sourcing, you're at home pricing and cleaning. So that, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into this. And just also managing like, hey, when should I lower the prices? Should I come back and check them? You're a hustler, man. Like we can definitely, even with the couple hours we've spent with yeah. you now, I respect that a lot about you. Thank you. So Tim, one thing that I'm really curious to know from you is looking forward to the next two, three years, what does the future hold for you? Well, that's a very funny question because not just a few years later, but a few weeks, maybe before this even airs, uh -huh. we've got twins on the way. Dang. And so between a toddler and twins, it's gonna look a lot different. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And second of all, I bet that is a relief to have a business model that's as flexible as this in that kind of a season. Correct. Even in this season now, being able to stay at home more with my wife and my toddler right. has been a huge help for our family. So in the next few years, I'm hoping to honestly be a pastor or missionary uh -huh. uh, and honestly liquidate all of the stock. So whenever I make a move, this is what happens to all the stuff I have. You'll be I putting it on it. sale. Yep. I sell it to a different reseller and they can make some profit off of me. Yeah, well, yeah. hey, you have my number if that ever happens. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you wanna watch a video where a video game store owner lets you know why not to own a video game store, you can click this one right down here. And if you're in the Clarksville, Indiana area, check out the Vendors Village, yes, buy some please. stuff from Tim here. And folks, I will catch you guys on the flip.